In this clip, we want to review the factors that influence the weathering of rocks, influence things like how fast the rock weathers when it's exposed at the surface, or that will affect how extensively weathered a particular rock at the surface is going to become. And uh, in the learning module, we really looked at three of the factors, not all of them, but just these three that are listed here. Uh, how fast a rock weathers depends on things like what kind of rock it is, of course, the rock type, and also on the climate. And how extensively weathered a rock becomes depends on how long it's been at the surface or the time it's been exposed at the surface. So uh, we'll review mostly the first two factors. The third, the time factor, is pretty self-explanatory. And in order to talk about the rock type factor, we really need to talk about how fast different minerals in rocks weather, right? Because for the chemical weathering reactions, they all involve certain minerals in the rock reacting with usually water at the surface of the earth. So uh, let's look at the factor uh, rock type in terms of first of all talking about the rate at which different minerals will weather. Okay, so uh, on this slide we'll make some notes about mineral weathering and I think a good place to start is to talk about the silicate minerals. Uh, back when we were going over the igneous rocks, we learned about Bowen's reaction series, which was a list of silicate minerals. And the Bowen's reaction series, let's just put that down here. Review that. Okay, what Bowen's reaction series is, is the list of the silicate minerals uh, that will crystallize out of a magma as it cools from high temperature to low temperature. And we're not going to really use it that way in this weathering context, but we'll list the minerals uh, that are on the Bowen's reaction series. Right over here we had olivine, pyroxene, amphibole, and biotite, and there are mafic silicates. And over here on the right-hand side, there were plagioclase feldspars. Let's just write plagioclase feldspars. Right, at higher temperatures, you get calcium-rich plagioclase feldspar, and then the plagioclase compositions evolve as they're crystallizing out of the magma toward more sodium-rich compositions, but we don't need to focus on that here. Okay, and then uh, was uh, potassium feldspar, muscovite, and we said quartz is the last mineral to crystallize out of a magma. So, right, that was the Bowen's reaction series, and in the learning module we said that we could use this uh, list of silicate minerals to talk about how the different minerals will weather. All the different mafic silicates will weather by uh, oxidation with the Fe2 plus iron in them to form an iron oxide mineral like hematite, and some of them will also undergo hydrolysis. So it turns out that these minerals that are toward the top of Bowen's reaction series here, like olivine and pyroxene, they're pretty easy to weather, or we could say easily weathered, whichever way you want to say it. And right, uh, the quartz mineral down here at the bottom of the list, that's very resistant to weathering. If you think back to our list of chemical weathering reactions, Quartz was not a participant in any of the chemical weathering reactions, so it's going to be very resistant to chemical breakdown, and it's also a physically strong mineral too, so rocks that have a lot of quartz in them are going to be more resistant to the physical weathering as well as the chemical weathering. So, uh, The feldspars, remember how they weather? They weather by hydrolysis to form clay minerals, right? So, so they're going to break down. Um, uh, when they're at the surface of the earth, mostly by the hydrolysis reaction. So, 
It's kind of, you can think about the Bowen's reaction series also. Uh, when we reviewed for the first test, we said that when we look at these four mafic silicates over here on the left-hand side of the Bowen's reaction series, they're in order of increasing linkages between silica tetrahedra, like uh, the olivines and isolated tetrahedral silicate, pyroxenes, uh, the single chain example, example of a single chain silicate mineral, amphiboles, the double chain structure, uh, biotype being a mica, of course it's a sheet silicate. So, uh, kind of more fundamental reason for why minerals like olivine and pyroxene are relatively easy to weather is that they don't have as many extensive silicon oxygen strong bonds holding them together. It's going to be easier for acidic water to attack weaker bonds like between the oxygens in the silica tetrahedra and the bridging cations like iron and magnesium than it is to break up those silicon oxygen bonds that we have within the silica tetrahedra. So in a mineral that has a kind of more simple structure, if you will, where the silica tetrahedra are not linked together, like the olivine mineral, there's going to be a lot of those weaker bonds for the acidic water to attack to break down the mineral. Pyroxene is only a single chain silicate. So again, the silicon oxygen bonding is not as extensive and that contributes a lot probably to making the pyroxene more vulnerable to chemical weathering. Uh, now the quartz, right, it's pure silica. So it's going to be a survivor. It's going to be very hard for that to be broken down by acidic water. Now another mineral we talked about when we went over the chemical weathering processes was calcite. Okay, so calcite is another mineral that's easy to weather. It weathers by dissolution and of course the dissolution requires water so it does depend on climate somewhat. If we have a rock that has a lot of calcite in it and it's exposed at the surface, there's a humid climate or wet climate at the surface, that rock with a lot of calcite in it isn't going to be able to survive as long. Whereas if it's exposed at the surface in a dry climate where there's not a lot of water around, it can survive a little bit longer. Uh, in the sedimentary rock chapter, we learned that limestone, it's a chemical sedimentary rock, right? That's made of predominantly the calcite mineral. So limestone will be easy to weather in a wet climate and more resistant to weathering in a dry climate. So now we're starting to talk about the second factor here, the climate factor, right? The chemical weathering reactions require water. So the climate is going to be a factor where in dry climates that chemical weathering is going to be greatly suppressed because of lack of water. Whereas in humid climates or really wet climates like tropical climates, the, there's going to be plenty of water around and chemical weathering is going to go on at a faster rate to break down the rocks at the surface. Um, another way that climate is a factor is we were talking about the um, physical weathering reactions like the freeze-thaw weathering. That's climate dependent. It requires a seasonally cold climate for freeze-thaw weathering to be an important factor. So let's just go back to the rock type uh, slide and we can make some other notes about different types of rocks and how rapidly they weather. Uh, if we think about rocks that are rich in quartz, they're going to be harder to break down at the surface. So uh, quartz rich rocks, things like uh, the granite in the uh, igneous rock category, if granite has among igneous rocks, higher percentages of quartz. And the sandstone rock, uh, sedimentary rock, right? Classic sedimentary rock. A lot of the sand grains are going to be that quartz mineral. So a lot of sandstones are rich in quartz. 
and that helps make sandstone hold up better at the surface of the earth. Uh, these are going to be rocks that are resistant to chemical weathering because of their quartz content. Now in the granite, the other thing that's in there besides quartz is there's a lot of feldspar and of course the feldspar will break down in a humid climate by hydrolysis reactions. It'll form clay minerals and the quartz will hang in there for a longer time, right? It will be resistant to weathering. It'll probably just drop out of the rock as little grains of sand that can later become part of a sandstone rock. So, uh, but still, you know, granite, you usually think of granite as a pretty strong type of rock, physically strong, and uh, will hold up better in the landscape, even if the climate's kind of humid. Uh, you now we can add a little bit to our easy to weather rock categories. Uh, we learned in the metamorphic rock chapter that when limestone gets metamorphosed, it forms a metamorphic rock marble. So it's marble usually has uh, high calcite in terms of its composition and the marble will be vulnerable to weathering in humid climates at a faster rate than maybe some other types of metamorphic rock like, uh, well, quartzite, right? <laughs> quartzite metamorphic rock that's made mostly of quartz mineral, so that's going to be a very, very resistant rock. Hard to break down the quartz in the quartzite rock, and it's going to be a pretty resistant rock in the landscape. Now, we can put on the easy to weather list of rocks <laughs> shale, the fine grain classic sedimentary rock or, you know, mudstone. And the thing about shale is, right, it has a lot of thin layers, it comes in thin layers, and it's easy to break the rock along those thin layers. So physical weathering can take care of the shale rock in arid climates, even when you don't have any water around, you can still have the physical weathering. Work at those thin layers of the weak shale rock and break it down as a result of physical weathering. Okay, so kind of the way we set up this diagram, is we're comparing different rocks over here, right? Uh, in terms of ones that are easy, oops, <laughs> easy to weather. And then down here we have rock types that tend to be a little bit more resistant to weathering when they're exposed in the landscape. Okay, easily weathered. and resistant. Oops, resistant oh, to weathering. So, all right, and it does, of course, depend on the mineral composition of the rocks. So I think we've pretty much covered the rock type and climate factors for our factors that influence weathering. If you have questions about these uh, reviews, you want to ask me questions during the online office hours coming up on Sunday night before the test, for example, 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock p.m. You can post questions to the discussion forum on WebCT, or you can send me email question over the WebCT email or my regular email, sgabel at lee.edu.